Keystrack is presenting the Crawler Mobile Joe Crusher Type B5E for quarry applications, primary crushing and for recycling applications for feed size up to 600 mm. So the hopper itself is made in double shell design, which means the outer shell is made of uh, high tensile steel, one through going element over the whole length, and also here, one element through going to avoid cracks here, and the inner shell is made of hardness Brinell steel 450. The hopper bolts can fold down hydraulically. The hydraulic cylinders are protected by rubber against falling stones. The hopper walls are folding fully hydraulically and the folding mechanism we can see here in this area. So the fixation of one hopper wall to the next hopper wall is done by a hydraulic cylinder without one bolt, without climbing up. So it is a very, very safe operation from the bottom. To give lateral support to the hopper walls, we have here extremely heavy duty beams which support the hopper against bending. And for transport, it's very simple. You just remove the bolt and nothing more. So the hopper itself it has a feeding widths on the rear side of three meter. It has a feeding length here on each side of 2.8 meter and a feeding height of four meter. Inside the hopper is lined with uh, hardness Brunel lining 450, 10 millimeters and 15 millimeters for heavy duty quarry applications. Underneath the hopper we have the discharge vibrating feeder which is feeding the material constantly to the choke rusher. The length of the vibrating feeder is 2.3 meter by width 1 meter. Also, the feeder is lined with bolted wear lining hardness Brunel 450. Then we come to the fully independent uh, double deck scalper with a length also of 2.3 meter, a width of uh, 1 meter. The top deck of the uh, scalper can uh, be punch plates with hexagonal openings or longitudinal openings and the change of the punch plates can be done from top. So it is not necessary to go underneath the machine, everything can be done from top. To avoid spillage of fine and wet material in the hopper, as we have seen before, we have here a very good labyrinth ceiling which is closed when the hopper wall is closed. A bottom deck of the scalper and to the scalper itself, the bypass chute and the choke rusher, we can move back the full feeding unit, which means the hopper, the vibrating feeder and the scalper hydraulically by 600 millimeter. And then we can go in from here to change the bottom deck of the screen and to make service to the chute and to the choke rusher. To discharge the fine fraction either to the stockpile or in crusher bypass, we have here a tube with a flap and then we can easily change the way of the material by just turning this flap. The middle fraction, what we see here, which means above bottom deck, uh, below top deck, always goes in crusher bypass. The drive of the pre-screen stockpile conveyor is performed by an electric drum motor of 4 kilowatt. So the heart of the machine for sure is the choke crusher. The heavy duty choke crusher, what we see here is nearly 20 tons. It has a width of 1100 millimeter and a depth of 700 millimeter. It is driven by an electric motor, 132 kilowatt, via V belts and extremely heavy duty uh, discs for uh, driving the crusher. The driving disc has grooves to bring over the full power of the electric motor to the crusher. For dust suppression 
We have here a system driven by an electric motor and a water pump to spray water above the material and the dust cannot go in the surrounding. So here we have a very well protected ultrasonic sensor which is checking the filling degree of the Joe Crusher. When the filling degree is coming up, it stops the feeder while the scalper is uh, continuing screening off the material and it regulates the flow of the material into the Joe Crusher. When the level is going down again, the feeder starts to bring new material into the crusher. So this is the wedge system, a system which is adjusting the closed side setting of the choke crusher with one hydraulic cylinder on each side, side and two wedges which are opening and closing the gap. So here we have the main conveyor for discharge of the crushed and pre-screened material on stockpile or to the built on after screen. The main conveyor has a width of 1000 mm. There's an axle distance of 11.4 meter. It has a discharge height for stockpiling of 3.8 meters. It means we can make a stockpile of roughly 170 tons. In the bottom of the uh, discharge uh, conveyor we have a damping zone. The rubber belt itself is a ripstop belt and we have a guiding chute along the whole conveyor to avoid falling out of material. For transport, the main discharge conveyor is foldable hydraulically. The drive of the main conveyor is performed by an electric drum motor with a capacity of 11 kilowatt. Optionally, a magnetic separator is available, either in a fixed position as here, or with a hydraulic lifting and lowering system. The magnetic separator can be delivered either in neodymium or in ferrite design. The drive of the magnetic separator is done by a gear motor with 4 kilowatt. The belt widths we have 700 and the axle distance 1800 millimeter. So the magnetic separator is a three pole type it means that on top of the uh, separator, no steel parts can stick. The discharge chute is made of stainless steel to avoid also uh, sticking of material here on the chute. So the drive of the whole machine is done by this engine unit. It consists of a Volvo engine with a 251 kilowatt and an alternator with 320 kVA. The engine unit is uh, in a compartment for noise absorbing and even the diesel fuel tank is inside the unit. So this Volvo engine has a EU Stage 3A, it's a fixed speed engine and it is running at 1500 RPM. Low speed for low noise emission and low uh, CO2 emission. In the next step, or it is also available, uh, a Cummins engine for stage five. The alternator has its own uh, air suction system for cooling of the alternator with a filter, what you can see here, and the separate filter for the diesel engine. All the filters are for ease of service, uh, made in the same range with uh, doors which can be opened easily, so quite easy for the service. So from this side, we have access to the engine unit, refueling pump, and to the filter of the refueling pump. So this is the switch cabinet with the seven inch display and the controller inside, and a second separate operating panel for the unit. The whole switch cabinet is under pressure. It means that we have here a filter and a fan 
which gives over pressure to the switch cabinet. So the over pressure is here inside to avoid the dust can enter and to keep the switch cabinet really clean. What we have also is a cable remote control for the tracks and a wireless remote control for the whole unit. So for safety nests we have a grounding peak here for electric earthing. We have seven emergency stop switches on the machine, around the machine and we have one blue machine stop button on the remote control. So for drop off of the engine unit we have here power lock connectors which can be disassembled very fast. The engine unit can be removed and from with cables uh, we can supply the power to the machine. Even if the machine or the engine unit has some service or some fault you can rent a standard uh, diesel genset and connect the power up to here or you supply power from your grid. So the hydraulic system for driving the tracks and for folding uh, the conveyors and the hopper is arranged here. We have an electric motor with 45 kilowatt. We have a hydraulic pump. Most of the uh, connections, the hydraulic connections are made in uh, pipe work in stainless steel that the heat can go out already through the pipe work and must not be cooled down by the cooler and it's also more uh, uh, safe and the lifetime is much longer than for hydraulic hoses. So the hydraulic pump is an axial piston pump. It means uh, the power which what is produced is exact the power what is required. We are not producing more power than required otherwise we only have to cool down the oil and less efficiency. For the control of the uh, hydraulic we have PVG valves. To avoid vibrations to the switch cabinet and to all other cabinets we have separate rubber dampers and here we have a power plug out so from this plug we can connect power for additional uh, equipment for example a stacker or a scalper. Here we have the automatic lubrication system for the machine. So the frame of the machine is made of very heavy duty steel sections and all of the parts are powder coated. It means the surface protection is the best what you can do. Due to this reason the uh, frame is split in pieces that it is fitable for powder coating. Here we can see uh, the hydraulic hoses are mainly made, as I mentioned, of stainless steel pipes to bring out the energy in a very economic way. The chassis, the tracks of the plant, we have uh, a width of the tracks of 400 millimeter and the length, axle distance of the tracks of 3.8 meters. So for safe fixation of the plant on the semi-trailer, we have here uh, certified fixing points around the machine. So the transport dimensions of this B5E are 14 meter in length, 2.9 meters in width and 3.4 meter, meters in height and the transport weight with the options built onto this machine is 50 tons without the options for the 6.5 tons.